everybody. This is Gina Kubik. I'm recording Facebook Live for Gamble. Welcome to our daily Gamble episodes of Facebook Live at 10.30 and 3 every day. And it's such a pleasure to be with you. Um, we'll give a, people a few more minutes to arrive in the, in the Facebook room here. And, uh, and before we start our topic for the day, our topic for the day is going to be marketing. And it's one of my favorite topics. And so we'll have a lot of fun talking about some things you can do while you're at home to market your long arm business. You don't, you can do a whole bunch of prep work while we are all at home uh, with this virus, uh, getting ready to make your business boom. So now um, we're, um, we've got a couple people coming in. I'm just noticing, yeah, super. W welcome, welcome to the Gamble Facebook Live. Thank you so much for being here. I hope to help you with your marketing strategies today. You know, marketing is one of my absolute favorite, favorite topics uh, to, to talk about. And um, I actually did work in sales for a while and uh, was a lot of fun and um, have combined some of that knowledge with uh, the quilting. And I, I hope to help you with that today. So. We're almost at uh, ten thirty. We're gonna we're gonna give everybody a few minutes to get in the room. Um, welcome to my home studio here in Saxe, Texas, and it's a little suburb, uh, not too far from Dallas, about twenty minutes from the Dallas Fort Worth area. We moved up here a few months ago, and so we're still getting settled. Um, love it here. Have grandbabies here, so it's it's a lot lot of fun for us to be up here and um, so this is the for everyone who just joined uh, this is the 1030 uh, version of the Facebook live on the Gamble quilting site and every day you can get on Gamble quilting and watch Facebook live and if you forget there'll be videos that you can watch later of all these live events so without ever any uh, further ado, let's go ahead and, and get started now. It's, it's right at 1030. So let's go ahead and get started talking about marketing. Marketing is, oh my goodness, it's one of my favorite, favorite subjects. Um, I, I worked as a nurse for a long time and then I got into sales. And I got into pharmaceutical sales. And honestly, we've spent hours and hours and hours of tracking. Tracking is important in quilting too. We would do spreadsheets, trying to find where the business was, where the doctors were that were prescribing certain types of medications, etc. Luckily for you, you don't have to do that. You can find the quilters. So where are the quilters? You don't have to do all that research. Well, number one, let's first talk about quilt stores. Quilters go to quilt stores. Let me tell you, this is a special, excellent place for you to do some of your marketing. Now you gotta set yourself apart a little bit. You're not gonna walk in a quilt store and just say, hey, take my card, I'm a quilter. You, you want to walk in there with some of your work. It's a lot more effective if you walk in a quilt store and you say, here's a quilt that I just finished for one of my customers, or in this case, one of my grandbabies. It will be coming soon, Madeline. Sorry, it's late. Um, and, and let me show you what my quilting machine can do and you tell this to the store clerks because they want to know, does your machine have good tension? Are you, do you, uh, are you good at what you do? They won't hand out any of your cards if they haven't seen your work. And that is very true. So right now is a very good time to work on samples. Samples that you can take to the quilt store. And if this uh, continues where we're at home, samples that you can mail 
to the quilt stores so that they can give you viral or online references for your work. So we can do all kinds of things. I know a lot of people will do small samples. Let me grab my small sample. And this one isn't bound, but they would put an envelope on it with their cards and mail it, you could mail it to the quilt store and say, if you hang this up for me, um, it'll have my cards in it. Another good way to work with quilt stores. Now, some quilt stores, you have to get even more creative. If, if that's not a go, you might wanna say, hey, you're teaching a class next month. Would you like me to quilt your sample for free? In turn, would you hang an envelope of my cards on there? all kinds of things that you can do to set yourself apart. But again, you have to show your work and show that your quality, your work is quality and it is very professional. One other thing I have to, I have to also recommend to you, it, some quilt stores have binders where they put, they put your cards in a binder and they'll say, oh, just go over there and put your cards in a binder. Well, one of the quilt stores that I went in when I started had a binder with like 20 pages of all these little inserts. And I didn't want anybody to miss my business, so I put a card in on every page. And those cards were there for you know quite a long time. But you also need to do something special. The quilt, the attendant that's cutting the fabric won't remember you if they just have a binder unless you set yourself apart. Show her your work by sending at this point in time, get those samples made that you can send to the quilt stores. Uh, get your cards printed up that you can send. And by all means, put some cookies or something in the box. Set yourself apart, you know, that you want them to say, I remember that quilter, she gave me chocolate chip cookies. Um, anything that you can do to market yourself as a professional is wonderful. But right now is a great time to make these samples to give to other quilt stores. And some of them have bulletin boards. Uh, for example, uh, some of the fabric chains like Joanne Fabrics have just bulletin boards in the back by the bathrooms. Well. When I first started, I went back there and there were no tacks. So I learned in a hurry, well, I would put my cards and um, bring about 30 tacks. And I did get business from there. Uh, I wasn't sure I would, but I did. So these quilt stores are, are just a phenomenal resource. You don't have to track and find the quilters. They are there. Another thing, that you can do to be creative if you're just getting started is take a piecing class at the quilt store. That is a great, great way to meet other quilters. And But you might wanna finish yours first and quilt it and you'll be surprised. Everybody's gonna to want to know your name. So that's another creative thing to do. Take one of the piecing classes that they and you can learn a lot about piecing and uh, you'll learn, you'll get customers. And another creative thing to do, one thing uh, that I also want to talk about other than, in, than quilt stores is quilting guilds. Oh my goodness, hundreds of quilters belong to quilting guilds. We really need to be there. We need to be there. If we want customers, we need to go. The first customer I ever got was because I took a quilt that I did for my daughter-in-law and I finished it and I took it up to show and tell. And um, someone said, who quilted that for you? And I said, I, I quilted it myself. I'm a new long arm quilter and I got my first customer that day. And after she got her quilt back, she referred me to several friends and, and things go on and on that way. But even if you don't have one of your own quilts made, if you quilt something for a customer that you think is extra special, ask her if you could take it to show and tell at your guild. 
They love it. They love their quilts being shown. It's a great, great idea to take quilts, even if you haven't made them, if you get permission, and do show and tell. That gets you out there. People can look at your work. People will come up to your quilt, look at the back, check the stitching, make sure you have good tension when you bring those quilts. Do you want to bring quality work when you're going to show it off? Another thing that we want to do right now while we're prepping for joining these uh, guilds and things, so I know we cannot go to meetings at the present time, but you can join them online. You can uh, go to some of their virtual classes online. You can post pictures of your quilts on, on their websites. And best of all, they have most of them at least, I haven't found one that didn't, they have ad pages where you can post a, a small ad for your quilt business. Normally it is not, not more than a hundred dollars a year for a whole year of an ad that goes out to all the quilters in the area for a whole year. You can't beat this. You have found the quilters. You don't even need to do tracking. That This newsletter is going to quilters. And so you want to use these resources that are out there for you. Uh, other things that you can do besides getting ads, uh, you can join groups. Right now we'll have for our bees and for our social groups with the guilds, we'll have to do Facebook groups. But just like this, you can you can do uh, go to meeting groups and have little go to meeting sewing groups in your guilds and do them virtually. And you'll get to know people in, in the group and they'll get to know you, that you're a professional. And most of all, you want them to know that you love, love, love what you do. Whenever you go to these groups, I know I don't have to tell you guys, don't complain about other quilters and how hard a job might have been. Everything should be positive because you do love what you do. I really do love what I do and I think sometimes it shows and it, it that will be contagious. And so that's another thing uh, that I wanted to mention to you is join these groups, even if it has to be virally now. Now, the third uh, place where you can find a lot of business is your long arm groups. If you don't have long arm groups in your area, get them started, even if you just have to do closed Facebook groups or private Facebook groups right now because you can't meet. What a good way to have go to meetings with these people that are in the same business and you can learn a lot from each other. And I, do, I implore you that these people are your friends. Some people think of them as their, um, as, as not their friends, that they might take their business. It's, it isn't true. The more you work together, the more you teach each other, both, all of your businesses will grow. These, uh, these other long arm quilters normally will help you and have such a good attitude. You teach them something, they teach you something, and everybody gets together and grows. At the holidays, uh, in the last town I lived in, we would, in our long arm group, um, decide who still had availability at the holidays. And so we could give referrals to our friends in our long arm groups. Now we had gamble specific long arm groups like a Statler group. And we had another group that we called a non-denominational group was just any kind of quilting machine ever and, and computerized or hand guided. And uh, that group was also beneficial. We all worked together like a team and taught each other things. And I'm so proud of those, those girls and those groups. Uh, and uh, those groups are down in San Antonio in Austin and I miss them so much. I might have to do a virtual meeting with them soon. So that is really uh, a key. These long arm groups, uh, and if you don't have one, start one. Find the, you know, slowly find the quilters in your area. 
put a note up on Facebook and find out who who is in my area who can I you know get together with even if it's just virtually right now and you can teach each other start with the first thing you can do when you get together is have show and tell or our favorite one back in San Antonio was show and help. I don't know what to do. And these, these quilt ideas that come from the group are wonderful. Not only that, your group will get to know that you also are a professional and that you're good at what you do. And when they don't have time to take customers, yes, they will give you referrals. So we were cohesive. We helped each other. And uh, those are things that I just want you don't don't think of, of other quilters as the, the competition work together. Um, I've heard some people even go so far when they buy their long arm is to have an open house and invite their whole neighborhood. Right now we can't do that. A virtual open house is a possibility. These are things that you could keep in mind for, for later. Uh, but you're, you need to also remember, be excited about your work, be professional. When people give you their quilt, they're a little afraid that maybe your dog's going to chew it up or, you know, whatnot. I do have three dogs, so I can say that. So when I take in a quilt, I assure them that their quilts are in giant Rubbermaid containers in another room. Uh, kept away from the dog. I get them on the long arm. I, I keep the dogs away from them. You've got to be professional. Take all their worries away. I even have my Rubbermaid container. I even, when they pick a color of thread, I put it right in the Rubbermaid container and so they don't have to worry that I'm going to change the color on them. If they pick a backing, if they haven't brought backing, I put it right in their container so they know that it's there ready to go. And I put their invoice right in their container and I stack the boxes in the order that they come in so that I know that I am taking and quilting them in the order so that nobody uh, gets ahead of someone else. And so these are things that show that you're professional. Um, you've got to show that you are a professional quilter. You have a professional quilting machine. You have professional invoicing software. And so you need to treat their quilts with care. They are a little skittish when they bring them to you. It's like leaving, leaving one of their babies with you. So you've got to assure them that everything will be okay. And so the, the main thing that uh, also that I want to talk to you about as far as uh, marketing yourself is your customers. Your customers will be probably your biggest source of new customers. Some people will tell customers, um, if you um, get me a new customer, I'll give you 10% off your next edge to edge. Be careful saying that you'll get 10% off your next custom job. I, I um, ate that one one time. Uh, <laughs> and so you might want to specify. So just be careful what you do. Um, but these are things that you can do to set yourself apart. And it's amazing. Once someone really, really wants to come to you, they tell everyone. They tell their friends. And that is a wonderful thing. And if you get a quilter that uh, maybe their quilts are not as good as other quilts, take some time and teach them a few things in, instead of, you know, don't criticize. Sometimes I would give people a book or show people how to do something and say, oh yeah, I used to do that that way when I started and, and here's that. They appreciate that. and. All of those nice words of kindness and acts of goodness will come back to you in more customers than you can ever handle. And so that that's just a little bit about a little bit about marketing and and things. And I, I hope that this helps here. And um, 
while you're at home now, get those samples made and start joining guilds. Get online, join things from afar, get your name out there. There's all kinds of things that you can do from home. So I appreciate you spending time with me today and I enjoyed it very much. And, and thank you for coming into, into my studio with me. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I feel like you guys are there. So virtual hugs. Bye and have a wonderful day.